Hello everyone, Framepack has a new update for their AI model. It's called the Framepack F1. Now we can check out the Framepack official GitHub repositories. As you scroll down to the news updates, there's a latest update from May 3rd about the Framepack F1. This is the new release of the model weights. The pre-trained models are available on Hugging Face right now, and it's the same format as the previous one, you know, five model files included, to download in the Framepack Gradio UI web app, and you can process that using Framepack locally on your PC. Now, in the GitHub repositories, there's an announcement that was just posted. After the model update of the Framepack F1, we have another Gradio Python file to run the specific models for Framepack F1. There's some editing you need to do for the run.bat files in order to get started with that. I've used the other run.bat files based on the original run.bat files for the first versions of Framepack. Then, I created another one called Run Frame F11 Frame Pack, and this one is specifically for running the Gradio for the Frame Pack F1 models. So there are two alternative ways to run this, based on what's mentioned by the author, to change the run.bat files to execute this app. I just created another run.bat file that's specifically for the F1. So because I have the first version as well, I just downloaded the second version, which is called the F1 models. And for new users, if you want to try out Framepack, you know, it's a really easy open source AI app. Basically, you go to the Framepack Hugging Face GitHub repository here, scroll down to the installations, download this .7z compressed file, unzip it, and decompress that. Then you just do this. The first time you run it, you just click the run.bat file. But instead of using the regular run.bat, if you want to access the latest version of the frame pack F1, then just follow what I mentioned about the instructions. For existing users, you basically just click the update.bat file, which you can get from here. We got the update.bat file. Just double click this. It will update your system, the web UI folders, all those codings, and then close it. Close this update file, and then you can start with and run the update.bat file as well. You just need to handle the update and run. Basically, the run F1 is what I created by myself, and I will upload this on link it in the description below. So when you're getting started with the app for the first time, you double click the run.bat file. You will see that there's something you need to download. If there's nothing you need to download, then it will directly go to the web app interface. And if you haven't downloaded the F1 model files that we mentioned from Hugging Face, it will help you download all those files from here. Then you can get started with the local URL to run the web UI, which you'll just see here. So far, everything here is about the same as the previous version, except there's improvement for all the fixes for MP4 compression files. Some people were experiencing a black screen for MP4 compression since some were missing the MP4 library for decoding, etc. And that would happen as well. So right here, all these things are about the same configurations. I won't go through those again. If you want to check those out, you can go back to the first frame pack video that I talked about. By doing that, you know, the image to video and click prompt. We'll try one example here and then we'll try if we can do another example later in Comfy UI. So here I can start with one image that I want to do for image to video. This is like a person talking in front of a camera and then they'll keep walking forward toward the camera view. We'll create kind of a long length video style within one shot like this. But for this demo, I'll just create a five second clip for demonstration purposes. Of course, you can go up to two minutes or one minute of video using this to create in frame pack and frame pack F1, which I've tested. The generation speed is faster and also the prompt adherence. I feel like it's getting better than the previous version. So let's check it out after the generation and see how the result looks. So we've generated the five second video here and the result is pretty coherent. You can see that it doesn't have any morphing or broken faces, etc. for this kind of video. The F1 did a lot of improvement for the rendering time. It's generating about one minute for every one second video frames. Yeah, that's how we can do it in frame pack F1. It doesn't need much explanation. The UI is very simple. I think everyone should be able to understand how to use it if you use a computer. Let's try out something else next, which is in Comfy UI. 
Now in Comfy UI, we can run the frame pack F1 model files. I've tried the previous method of loading the model using the hugging face repo pre-trained model weights, but then it doesn't have the options for us to choose the frame pack F1. The only way to run this right now is the F1 using the safe tensor files. This is downloaded here in this hugging face repository. There's an FP8 version. Now it's got the samplings updated as mentioned here. And then there's a link for the hugging face to download the frame pack F1, which is used for this comfy UI custom node. I downloaded the FP8 version just because it's smaller in file storage size and I wanted to test it out to see if it's able to work or not. And this, as you can see, is working and it looks like the same kind of quality as the one in the frame pack official repository for the web UI. And although this is another image that I'm using for the same text prompts, the previous example and this example use the same text prompts but with different images, similar images here because it was generated in a batch with the same styles. I see that this one looks better because there are more people walking around in the background, and I want to test if it's able to animate those people as well. And it does happen, it's able to allow the character to walk very smoothly toward the camera while walking, and you see the lips moving, you know, going, uh, looking like the character is talking, and then we can, you know, maybe do lip syncing in here for add-on features, etc. Also, one thing I want to try out here is the frame pack sampler. We have the start latent image and also the end latent image here. So we're able to use start frame and end frame as well in frame pack. And you don't need to download any extra AI models. Just the frame pack AI models themselves are able to do start and end frames as well. And one more thing I want to mention is the LoRa model. Here I'm using the Hunyuan Video's reward models that we talked about previously for Hunyuan Video. It also works. Hunyuan Video LoRa is compatible with FramePack because FramePack is based on Hunyuan Videos to create that, and therefore we're able to use that as well. But one thing is that you have to turn off the Fuse LoRa option, turn it to false, in order to use this LoRa feature in the FramePack wrapper and the latest update of the frame pack wrapper. It will have the LoRa options as well as the compile argument options for you to connect with the torch compile options here. So whether you've installed the Visual Studio C++ component and also installed all the way to Triton stage attention, you can use that in the attention mode as well. The other thing is the same workflow as what I've done in the previous videos about frame pack. But then I've added another workflow that's using for the frame pack start frame and end frame. Now here I have this working with the Flux Ace Plus. So you have the choice of using one image and then editing the image to generate as a new image. So you'll have two images for the start frame and end frame. That way we can just input one image and do the animation based on that one specific image here for the Flux Ace Plus. I've talked about that previously, and this is all the workflow of these connections of nodes coming from that tutorial where I've just duplicated that workflow onto here and combined that, integrated that into the frame pack workflow for the start frame and end frame. So once we have two images, which we have the input image for the start frame, and then after the Flux Ace Plus editing image, we'll have the end frame image input here, then will be able to process that as two images for the input. But if you want to have your own input images for both the start and end frames, we can do it another way, which is loading image files for the start frames and end frames. So basically I've made this little group here for images that aren't using the Flux Ace Plus and therefore will input two file paths for the images. It will be using the start frame called the image file start frame and then the other one, which is the image file end frame. So once we have these two files inputted into the workflow, it will pass to the processor. First, the image start frame settings here. Then, if you're choosing for the file, the image files, you will select the image file start frame. And for the end frame, go down to this group section. Then you will have the default setting for the image end frame. This is coming from the flux, and you can choose the image file end frame. This will be using what we're going to input for the file for the image file. So let's say we don't want to spend too much uh, rendering time running the Flux Ace Plus. We can turn that off for doing that. 
we can just turn off the first part sections here and leave the frame pack loader, the start frame settings, the frame pack sampling, and then the end frame settings. Also, we have to enable what's being used for the start frame and end frame without using the Flux Ace Plus. So we will enable this one as well. Then we jump back to this group. Then in this group, you're going to use your own image that's input into this workflow. In this demo, I'll be using these two images. One is the woman walking into the rainforest and the second image is a bit different in composition. It's this one. It will transition from looking up to the sky in the rainforest this way. Hopefully it will do good transitions like the one, 2.1 first last frames, two videos model that can be done in there. I want to test if frame pack is able to do it or not. So in the text prompts, it's very simple. A woman walking in the rainforest, camera transitions, first person view, look up to the sky and a natural scene documentary style. So let's try that and we'll put the length here. And once again, Remember to choose the right model files here. We're going to use the frame pack F1 this time to experiment if it's able to do the performance for start frame and end frame better than 1, 2.1 or not. And then we're getting the same settings for the other nodes here. For example, the clip loader VAE and the clip vision, they all do the same thing here for the frame pack as what we had in the previous video. So let's try this out. We're going to check it out later, and we got those two images loaded successfully for the first and last frame. So we'll have this image on top for the first frame, and then here we have this one for the last frame. Hopefully, there's something that will be able to work that out for this image. One thing to remember is to choose the load device to offload device if you have low RAM, or just, you know, choose the offload device for a consumer PC. This way, we can get this correct and run it again. Let's see how that works. So we got the data passed into the clip loader, and now it's in the text encoder starting the model loading here. We start the sampling process, which means the configurations after the frame pack wrapper update. I've reconnected those nodes, and it works for here in this workflow. So we'll wait for it to finish and see how the result looks. So we got the generated video here and at least this time we have a pretty stable video without much broken or morphing. Instead, there's only this part of the tree that suddenly changed because of the last frame. The end frame has a different tree structure so it has to force the transition over there. But then, the animations of the camera transitions from the first frame to the last frame did pretty smoothly. The motion of the camera looking up to the sky is able to follow my prompt of how I wanted the camera to look up. And then, this is one more time again, two images here. So yes, we can do the first frame, last frame interpolations using frame pack. And this looks pretty cool. Even better than the original Hunyuan video for image to video as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.